The Usual Suspects is one of my favorite movies of all time, mostly because of how brilliant Kaiser Soze is. He looks and acts like he's dumb, but in reality he is the mastermind. Ian Buckles is an homage to that character and this was a twist that I didn't see coming. When I think about it, this ending had the potential to work, Ian has been on the show since the first season and I could buy the fact that he would find himself near the top of the food chain, but his ascension to the very top of the food chain didn't feel convincing. So I get the idea behind this finale, but the execution was somewhat underwhelming. Hi there mate, how's it going? It's Benji here and this is a breakdown and review of Line of Duty Season 6 Episode 7. I can't believe we are here. This went by quick, didn't it? The finale starts with Steve and Kate discussing what they're gonna do about Ted. Ted told Lee Banks about an informant in their organized crime group units last season which caused John Corbett's death. Feeling sorry, Ted gave the OCG money he got under false pretenses to Steph Corbett, John's widow. Steve and Kate confront Ted and tell him they know about all of this and Ted says he leaked the information about an informant in order to bring in John. Ted wanted to lure John out by doing this, he wanted John to leave his undercover duty but as we all know, things went sideways and Ryan Pilkington killed John. I thought that was the end of it, I didn't think this topic would come up again in the finale but it did. Right towards the end when Ted bid farewell to AC-12. By this point, Ted knows that the central police isn't going to investigate institutional corruption, so he admits his wrongdoing to Carmichael, he tells her about John Corbett. This was probably the only clever moment of the ending because Carmichael can't investigate Ted, Ted knows that and so does Carmichael. This new anti-corruption unit isn't interested in high profile cases and investigating Ted would certainly attract unwanted attention, so it looks like Ted gets off scot-free. Earlier in the episode, the murder investigation team finds a strong box under the floor of the gun workshop which confirms that Carl Banks murdered Gail Vela. We already knew this but now the police have proof. Then it is confirmed that Marcus Thurwell is really dead and it turns out he wasn't sending anybody any messages. He was just a proxy for someone in the UK. The messages were coming from there and Thurwell's setup was rerouting the messages. Soon afterwards, AC-12 learn about a new message appearing to put out a hit on Joanne Davidson and once again the word definitely is misspelled. Our fourth man doesn't want Joe speaking. So OCG's put together a falsified production order and arrange a transport for Joe. The plan is to send out some armed operatives and get rid of her. But luckily for her, AC-12 are on the case. Kate and Steve are able to get to the transport van before the planned ambush and they prevent this massacre. Joe tells them in a follow-up interview that she thought Patrick Fairbank was his father and AC-12 interview Fairbank but we already know he's not gonna speak, he has dementia. Just when Ted is about to lose his mind, they catch a break thanks to cybercrime and it is revealed in a painfully slow manner that Ian Buckles was the fourth man. We spend around about 8 or 9 minutes before we actually see Ian on our screens, this is what I was talking about. I thought this wait was completely unnecessary because from their reactions, it was obvious that it was Ian. So I really don't understand why they had these slow shots before showing us Ian. Even though I had my problems with this storyline and this episode in terms of how it was crafted, I actually liked this interview scene. I thought Ian's reactions were extremely interesting because throughout the season I really thought he was just a buffoon. I knew this might have been an act, but I ruled out that possibility. So seeing him all smug during the interview was enjoyable for me and I liked it when he said he made mugs out of AC-12. It turns out Ian found himself at the top after all the important band coppers like Derek Hilton went out of the picture, but Ian wasn't the big bad we always thought the fourth man was. Sure, he was passing along information to separate OCGs, he was coordinating them and was blackmailing police officers like Joanne Davidson, but Ian was never like Tommy Hunter. He didn't have sole control of the OCG because the OCG doesn't exist anymore. It's just different groups and Ian took the opportunity and ran with it. He wasn't controlling these OCGs, he was using them for personal gain. AC-12 searches of Ian's prison cell and his properties confirm everything and after learning all this, Ian wants to go into witness protection because he knows that the central police do not investigate band coppers anymore. He realizes he can get away with everything and live happily after with a new identity provided to him by the state. 
But it's not that easy because Ted thought about this. They ask Ian about his role in Yale Vela's murder, and if Ian doesn't say anything, he is ineligible for the witness protection program because he doesn't cooperate. But if he does admit to this accusation, he is also ineligible. It's a catch-22. Ian cannot stay silent and he can't talk. And Ted goes, quote, no one makes mugs of AC-12, end quote. So far so good, it's all building up for one final reveal, right? Ian wasn't actually the top dog, was he? Surely somebody else like Chief Constable Philip Osborne or Deputy Chief Constable Andy Wise must be behind all of this. One of them must have been using Ian, right? No? What do you mean no? This is where things get a little bit sad because this episode had the potential to be a great finale. All the elements were there. I like the Ian Buckles twist. I don't have a problem with that. I just don't like the fact that he remained the top man at the end of this episode. There was no other reveal. That was it. If there isn't another season, it will remain that way forever. And that just doesn't feel right. In the end, Carmichael heads the new AC unit, Osborne consolidates power, Ian's trial isn't open to the public, Ted retires even though he says he'll fight his forced retirement, Steve is under medical review, Joe is in a witness protection program, Darren Hunter is arrested for the murder of Lawrence Christopher, and Terry Boyle and Farida Jatri are free. The more I think about it, the more this just doesn't feel like a good ending. Revealing Osborne or Wise as the final villain would have been a much better way to go about this, and that could still happen if we get more seasons, but we don't know if we will, do we? All we know is Ian was working with OCGs, and that is not a satisfying ending. Even though Osborne might come under scrutiny in the future, I feel like we should have gotten something on him by the end of this season. I don't think that the Ian Buckles angle of this episode was the actual problem. I think the real issue was not building on that great twist. The writers tried to show us the institutional ineptitude of the central police and how they were constantly infiltrated by OCG operatives and how those operatives rose up the ranks because this police force as an institution failed. I get that message, I don't mind it, but I think the message would have worked even better if we had the additional twist that that Wise or Osborne was the highest ranking corrupt officer. I think adding that final reveal would have magnified this issue they're trying to highlight, while at the same time making it more pleasing in a dramatic sense. I wouldn't have had an issue with that being the very end of the show. Like I said, it gets the message across and it is dramatic. Not only that, it also leaves the door open for another exciting season if they want to return. They can spend that final season trying to catch Osborne or Wise. Granted, they can still do that, they might return to this story, but because of this finale, I don't think people will be as hyped about it as they would have been if we had that final twist. Time to reveal my rating now, you can see my scale on the left hand side. I will give Line of Duty Season 6 a 7 out of 10. This is mostly because of the ending, but unlike some other people, I don't believe what we saw here was irredeemable like the Game of Thrones finale or the Lost finale. I still mostly enjoyed this, but at the same time I am aware that it had its issues, and I'm not denying that it could have been and should have been better. I certainly view this as a disappointment, but I don't think it's a major failure. One last note before we wrap this up, BBC Maestro has reached out to me and gave me a couple of copies of Jed Mercurio's screenwriting course and I'll be giving them away. Check out the pinned comment under this video to see how you can enter. Well, what did you think about the season finale and what would you rate this season out of 10? I'm sure this comment section will be spicy, so leave your comments down below, like this video if you've enjoyed this breakdown, and subscribe for more movie reviews and TV show breakdowns. That's it for now, take care and see you in the next video.